Phil Morgan here from Missouri Meersham, and uh, here happens to be on the edge of our uh, one of our cornfields, uh, and I'm in the shade of a big old pecan tree uh, because t it is supposed to be extremely hot today, up near oh, mid 90s, and then in the next three or four days, uh, up around 102 to 103 degrees. So. Uh, feels kind of good here in the shade of this big pecan tree, but uh, I wanted to uh, just give you an update from the field on our corn. The the corn uh, this year is looking uh, really good. We you know we've had a few challenges that uh, I think I've talked about earlier with uh, uh, all the rain and the the Missouri River getting up, and uh, boy we dodged a bullet with the Missouri River. Uh, not so much that it was going to overtop the levee, which is just to my right here, but that it was uh, could blow out the bottom of the levee and then would have flooded all of the, the fields here. Uh, we did have so much rain, however, that we had areas of the field, and that's what you can kind of see behind me. We have areas of the field where the water, uh, the, the ground gets so wet that the uh, the corn just doesn't grow, so we end up replanting if we can do that early enough. And that's what you can see behind me. You can see over on uh, on my right side behind me is some tall corn, and over on the left side here, uh, the corn is much shorter, and it's much shorter because this is an area that we had to replant uh, uh, in hoping that it would be early enough that this corn will also make uh, ears too. And I think we did. I think we got uh, any of the replanting we did, I think we got early enough uh, that we'll, we'll have ears from all of the corn. Unfortunately, there's areas of the field that uh, water is still somewhat standing in that we're just not going to get anything out of. The good thing is this year though, not only did we plant our fields behind us, which is the 150 acres, but we rented 125 acres to the east of us here, uh, and the corn in that field is, uh, is looking great too. So we're, we're hoping that this is going to be a year uh, that uh, we'll be able to really replenish our uh, inventory of big cobs, and uh, not just big cobs, but mid-sized cobs. Uh, last year we had a good corn crop. Uh, uh, we only planted about 160 acres. This year is about 270 acres. Uh, we had a great corn crop, but so many of them were large that we have a hard time making our mid-sized pipes from them. So this year, uh, we, we uh, again used our, old, uh, our seed, which is just for growing corn cob pipes. Uh, some, and it's made up of old varieties of corn. Some of them, uh, two of two of the varieties will actually give us very large cobs, and one of the varieties gives us kind of mid-sized cobs, which is which we definitely need too. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to give you, uh, I guess this is really my first update from the field. Uh, we had a, the drone video from the field uh, that uh, w w to me was really interesting. I uh, got a, a good perspective of where the field sits in relation to the river, uh, but this is the first time I've actually gotten out to the field uh, to make a video. So I uh, hope to do that a little bit more as, as uh, some of the cobs, when I came down the road through the middle of this field, boy, there's some just huge cobs growing in there. Uh, and some of the corn is just tremendously tall, 10 to 12 feet tall. Uh, you know, not all of it is that, but you can really see uh, how much our corn is made up of these old varieties of corn uh, because some of these old traits will all of a sudden appear like, uh, like having corn that's to the right of me down here that's 10 to 12 feet tall uh, and then some other corn that's maybe 8 to 10 feet, which is more normal. Uh, but it's, uh, that's, that's part of the uh, interesting thing. Uh, uh, thing about growing uh, a hybrid that's made up of these old varieties because sometimes some of the traits of some of those old varieties will present themselves. Uh, and uh, as, uh, as I've explained in the past, I think our corn is definitely a hybrid. Uh, all corn is a hybrid, uh, but our corn is not genetically modified and never will be. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that uh, our, our, the grain is somewhat sought after uh, for, uh, for cornmeal, for humans, for animals, uh, but also to make whiskey. Uh, and I think I've reported to you before that there's a distillery west of us that's buying our grain uh, to make what they're going to call pipe corn bourbon that they hope to present next year and kind of debut it at our plant. Uh, 
Anyway, just wanted to give you an update uh, from the field. Gosh, it's really nice in the shade of this big old pecan tree, but uh, I have a feeling tomorrow when you get out in the middle of the, the road on the middle of the field when it's 100 degrees, it's going to be... Uh, uh, it's going to be a little unbearable, and uh, it's my understanding we're going to have to run the irrigator uh, on this field uh, within the next two or three days because we're supposed to we're not supposed to get any rain, just have uh, really high heat and not have any rain until possibly the weekend. So uh, that's it for now. Just wanted to give you an update. Say thanks to everybody for being uh, fans of our pipes, and uh, we'll give you another update as this uh, crop progresses this year. Thanks a lot, everybody.